All right, and welcome to the final installment of tutorials for this chapter, the little bit of 2, 3, and 4. This first tutorial, is we are going to be able to determine if two functions are inverses. So we are in section 4.2 in the textbook, if you need to reference that. So I have here two functions. The first one is f of x is x plus 4, and the second one I've labeled with the fancy inverse symbol. This is called f inverse, or the inverse of f of x. So you can say f inverse of x or the inverse of f of x, and that's x minus 4. I, I know that these functions are inverses because ultimately inverses undo each other, and since one of them we're adding 4 and the other one we're subtracting 4, these would be undone. So they are inverses. I'd like to explore a few of the ordered pairs um, on each of these functions. I can pick whatever I want for x, so I'm going to pick um, the first three uh, inputs 1, 2, and 3. If I plug in a 1 into f of x, I'd get a 5 as the output. If I plug in a 2, I'd get a 6 as the output. And if I plug in a 3, I'd get 7 as the output. So this is just three of the ordered pairs that are on this function. If I find the corresponding ordered pairs over here from my inverse, we'll see something that's interesting with our um, ordered pairs of inverses. I'm going to choose the um, ordered pairs or the inputs 5, 6, and 7. When I plug a 5 into my inverse, I get 1 as an output. When I plug in a 6, I get 2 as an output. And when I plug in 7, I get 3 as an output. And what you might notice is that the ordered pairs that are on my function have been swapped x and y for the ordered pairs on my inverse. And that's something that's key to note in this tutorial, that a, b will be an ordered pair that's on my function if and only if b, a is an ordered pair that is on its inverse. So that's kind of a neat relationship between all the ordered pairs for a function and its inverse. So it's pretty simple to graph an inverse if you're given a bunch of ordered pairs. All you have to do is swap the x and the y, and you have a bunch of ordered pairs that would be on the inverse. So that's one thing. Um, the second thing, I'd like to look at their compositions. I'd like to look at f of f inverse of x, and I'd like to look at f inverse of f of x. I'd like to explore their compositions. Remember in a previous tutorial that um, f of f inverse is basically picking up the inverse function, which is x minus 4, and plugging it into the um, f of x function. So really we're talking about f of x minus 4 here, and that would be x minus 4 plus 4 which, of course, we can see that the, the negative 4 and the positive 4 ultimately cancel out, and we get x. Over here, um, we're taking f inverse of f of x. And since f of x is the function x plus 4, then we're taking f inverse of x plus 4, which would be x plus 4, and then minus 4. So we take our inputs and we subtract 4. And again, you can see that the 4s would cancel out, and we get x. This is what needs to happen if two things are truly going to be inverses. So this is the last note for this page. f and g, two functions, are inverses if and only if f of g of x is the same exact thing as g of f of x and they both need to be all equal to x. So that's how we're going to be able to prove if two things are inverses. We're going to find the composition each way, f of g and g of f. And if both of the compositions crank down to x, if they both equal to x, then we know we are dealing with two inverse functions. <clears throat> So our first example is asking us the question, are these inverses? We have a of x and we have b of x. <clears throat> well, to figure out if they are inverses, we need to figure out what a of b of x is, and it better be equal to x. 
but we just that alone is not enough. We need to do b of a of x and make sure that is equal to x as well. So we have two problems to do. It doesn't matter which one we start with, so might as well just start with the first one. a of b of x, or rather a of b of x. I'm going to plug the b of x function into the a, and the b of x is just 5 over x. So that means that I'm going to take this x out of the out of the ball game, and 5 over x is going to take its place. So I've got 5 divided by 5 over x minus 2. Again, I'm just taking this x out and putting in the b of x function right into it. And I need to see if this is somehow going to turn into x. Well, I've got my um, fractions down here in the bottom in the denominator, and that has to, if I'm subtracting them, they need to have a common denominator, so I'm going to give it the x, so x to, um, x to the numerator and x to the denominator. So now I've got 5 divided by, I've got 5 over x, and now I've got minus 2x over x. Now that they have the same denominators, I can combine them together and make 5 minus 2x divided by x. Now that I have one fraction divided by one fraction, I can multiply by reciprocals. So this is going to be 5, maybe I put it over 1, times the reciprocal of this function, which is x divided by 5 minus 2x. And this is going to be equal to 5x divided by 5 minus 2x. I don't see anything really going on here. I don't think things are going to cancel out. It doesn't look like this is going to be equal to x. I don't know what else I could do to try to even tr uh, get that, but it's just not going to be. So since this composite did not crank down to x, I can instantly stop right now and say that these are not inverses. I don't even need to go and figure out what uh, b of a of x is, because if the first one didn't work, then uh, it, it doesn't matter. They're not going to be inverses. Okay. So that's kind of nice that we had we didn't have um, all the work that we needed to do there. We figured out that they were not inverses. Second one, j of x and k of x. I want to see are these inverses. So we got to do the same thing. We got to go find j of k of x. And we need to find k of j of x. Got to do them both to see. So let's see. We've got j of k of x is that whole big cube root. Cube root of x plus 1 over 2. So I'm going to plug this whole cube root in for just this little input right there. So I've got two of the cube roots cubed minus 1. Two of the cu two inputs cubed minus one, so two inputs cubed minus one. Okay, so that looks good. Let's keep going with this. The first order of operations say I should probably get rid of this um, um, exponent here. So cubing a cube root that actually knocks out. So I get two times this x plus one over two minus one. Okay, that's kind of nice. And then I see that the two divided by the two would cancel out. Okay, good. So now I've got x plus one and then minus one. And then it looks like the one and the negative one cancel out. Looks like I get down to x. That's great. This does not mean that they are inverses. That's just half of the way. Okay, so now we need to do k of j of x. And I bet that this is going to work, but we have to show the work here. So j of x is this cubic function, 2x cubed minus 1. Okay, so k of that. So I'm going to plug that all in right here for just this little input. So I've got a big cube root of that input happens to be this whole cubic. So 2x cubed minus 1. And then I've got the plus 1 over 2. Okay, so we've got this. Now, this is what I cannot have you do. Please do not just start slashing everything, right? Don't do this, and then this, and then this, and then this, and say, yay, it's x, that's great. No, I don't want you to be Zorro with all of your slashes. <laughs> Okay, so um, I, I don't see, I, I understand what you're, what you're trying to say, but I don't know which slash you made first. So this is not good enough work for me. So let's, let's undo all this, okay? Go with your order of operations. The first thing that actually cancels out is negative 1 and positive 1. And then what's left is still a cube root 
we've got 2x cubed divided by 2. The next thing that does cancel out would be the 2s. And then we'll be left with the cube root of x cubed. And then the final thing that cancels out, uh, the cube root of a perfect cube is the x. And since they both, uh, both compositions crank down to x, these are inverses. And we have the work to prove it. So that is how you can prove that two things are inverses or prove that they are not inverses. And thus ends this tutorial. I hope you had a good one.